The headlines. On the first anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the UN approves a resolution calling on Moscow to withdraw its forces. Russia must immediately, completely and unconditionally withdraw its forces from the territory of Ukraine. If Russia stops fighting, this war ends. If Ukraine stops fighting, Ukraine ends. The BBC travels to northeastern Ukraine and hears personal testimonies about the misery of war. This has been the scariest year of my life. So little joy and laughter, so much fear, pain and tears. Before we go, I just want to show you these pictures from Paris, where the Eiffel Tower has been illuminated with the national colors of Ukraine ahead of that one year anniversary of the start of the war. That's it from us. Thanks for watching. On the first anniversary of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the United Nations calls for an immediate withdrawal of troops. Ceremonies will take place across Ukraine today to mark the anniversary. Millions of people remain displaced, many of them in Britain. You're watching Breakfast on what is the first anniversary of the start of the conflict in Ukraine. Let's take a closer look at the true cost of the war. In terms of the number of people killed, it's massively disputed. Estimates from the UK Ministry of Defence for the number of Russians killed ranges from 40 to 60,000. Russia denies that. More than 20,000 Ukrainians are known to have died, according to the government and the UN. That figure is believed to be much higher. As many as 8 million Ukrainian refugees have been recorded across Europe, though some have now returned. And currently, 4.8 million Ukrainians are in temporary protection schemes. Take a look at this map here. It shows where they've gone and how many have fled to each country. Russia has claimed 2.8 million Ukrainians have fled east across its border, but the UN has not been able to verify this. So a year ago, before the invasion, the only occupied territories in Ukraine were Luhansk and Donetsk in the east, held by Russian-backed separatists. Just weeks later, large parts of the southeast and north of Ukraine were under Russian military control. You can see in the red on the map there. But Ukraine has fought back thanks to artillery from Europe and the US and seized back much of the north. Russia still occupies large parts of the east. Have a look at some of the front pages for you and many of them reflecting on the anniversary, of course, of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Times headline reads, Ukraine's year of blood features a picture of a refugee draped in her nation's colors and sitting on the rocks of Carmarthenshire, where she now lives. Now, the metro marks the first anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine with the evocative picture of Ukrainian flags in the graveyard. Now, this is the front of the Times there, the headline there, Ukraine's Year of Blood. The Archbishop of Canterbury warns that Russia must not be crushed or we risk a country left in the same state as Germany after the First World War, which brought about the rise of Hitler. It's Friday the 24th of February. Our main story, the United Nations General Assembly has overwhelmingly backed a resolution condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which took place exactly a year ago. The motion, which calls for the withdrawal of troops from Ukraine and a halt to fighting, was backed by 141 nations with 32 abstaining and seven, including Russia, voting against. Well, let's speak to our Ukraine correspondent, James Waterhouse, who's in Kiev for us this morning. James, Russia thought this would be a short invasion, that Kiev, where you are standing, would have fallen into their hands by now. But everybody has been surprised by the resistance. And here we are, a year on. That's exactly right, Nina. I think on that morning uh, this time last year, the once unthinkable happened. So many Ukrainians thought Vladimir Putin was bluffing when he gathered more than 150,000 of his troops across Ukraine's vast borders. At the time, he said he was just carrying out military exercises. We now know he's preparing something far more sinister. And this city felt very different. There are ceremonies today uh, to mark this almost a bittersweet anniversary. It's something Ukraine wants to shine 
a light on, if you like, but it was on this morning, a year ago, that Russia changed Ukraine. A thud marking the moment when Ukraine and the world uh, changed forever. Much bigger land grab. We've just heard a siren go off for the first time. We haven't heard that before. After months of build-up, 150,000 Russian soldiers crossed the border. Millions headed the other way. A country under attack, with its people caught in the middle. Where Russia retreated, horrors were revealed. Ukraine's president became a wartime leader. His video addresses now a nightly ritual. Moscow is still framing this as a defensive war. Today, once again, we are in grave danger. Using Ukraine, the collective West is seeking to dismember Russia, to deprive it of its independence. These attempts are doomed to fail. The United Nations has voted to demand Russia stops its invasion. Today, the UK is going to urge countries to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. For now, in the West, there is broad unity. But that could change the longer this war goes on. Ukraine has reclaimed some of what was taken, like here in her song. Complete liberation is a long way off. Her son, as we speak, is being continually shelled. 40,000 people, according to President Zelensky, are without power. Now, Ukraine would ultimately win the battle for Kyiv, but Russia occupies almost a fifth of the country still. I think we are some way off liberation, but what President Zelensky said overnight on this day was that millions, he said, uh, made a choice this time last year. Uh, we didn't choose a white flag, we chose a blue and yellow flag, he said. We chose not to flee, but face.